Well, first of all, just like other packages, you can generally input data into SAS from a variety of formats. You can put it in a text format. You can put it in, in the program itself if you want to. It can read from Excel. Other software data sets, there's generally options um, to sort of take the data um, which has been produced by another software data set into SAS. You can even enter the data manually if you want to. The, uh, one of the powerful things about SAS is its ability to manipulate data. Um, so it's very easy to combine multiple data sets in various ways or you can merge them. You can store as many data sets as you want during a SAS session. You can either store them temporarily or you can store them permanently. So you can sort of, you've got data you've manipulated, you can pick it up another time to do more work with it. In terms of functions, there's all sorts of functions on offer in SAS. I quite like the fact that if you've got text variables, it can manipulate them in all sorts of ways, you know, pick out different parts of the text to manipulate it. Times and dates, there are lots of formats available and it can read dates in various ways and output date, both dates and times in lots of different ways. It's got all the mathematical and statistical functions. It's also got functions to um, randomly generate data, so a huge number of functions available. Just to show an example of manipulating some data, this is the sort of messy form I got that um, data set I've used for the example in. So actually it's not a very nice form at all, it's got a row for every time point and along the columns these are the different individual samples. It doesn't tell us, there's not really anything telling us exactly what the treatment is, we're going to have to extract that from this, this first row. We can read that into SAS. Once we've done that, there's something called the transpose procedure, which we can use to sort of turn this round so we can make each of these into sort of rows and have a variable that denotes this, the values in this first row. And so if we do that, we get these, it still doesn't look very nice, we get these names coming in as now as a column rather than as the first row. We can use a prop contents to see what the names, these variable names were, although it's reasonably clear from here. Um, we, it's still not in a very usable format, so we want to be able to extract the treatment names and the sample um, ID from this name column. So we can use, there's a function called substring, which is quite useful. That allows you to sort of pick out bits. So that was the original name. We want to get the sample ID and that's given by this A10. So we want to sort of start from the fourth position and take the next three characters so that we have three coming in there. So that's going to pick out the, this A10, which happens to be our sample ID. And of course, that's going to be different sort of further down the data sets. So we've got various different samples. And we want to get out the treatments. So this A thing is the treatments. And so we use the substring function again and say that's the fourth character, but we only actually want one character there. The time, we've got this exact time point, we want to have it as a category, so to do that we use the round statement, so we get naught if it's time points, sort of naught to six hours, six for sort of six to twelve, and so on. So we've now got the data in a, a usable form by using some of these SAS functions. And when you print the data, you can just specify which variables you actually want to print. You don't have to print absolutely everything that's in the data set. And here I've just relabeled, we've got col1. When you do the transpose procedure, it just calls it col1 for the data that was transposed. But we've relabeled that as signal. So we just say signal is, is that col1. And now we've got um, a column called signal. I haven't done an example, but in terms of joining data sets, um, SAS is um, it's all quite feasible in SAS. If you've got three data sets, A, B and C, or as many data sets as you want, you can stack them onto each other just by using this set statement. And this is the name of a new data set. So if you want to create a new data set, this is one way to do it. Um, you say, uh, my data set name is joined and I just want to stack these three data sets on top of each other. Another thing that you often want to do is to merge data, different fields together from different data sets. So if we call this new data set, we're going to create a data set called merged. 
then we use, instead of a set statement, we now use a merge statement. We're going to merge the three data sets together. But you have to merge by something. Um, it has to know what its variable to join up the fields by. And here it's going to be ID. D, so that might be your sample ID if we've got measurements of the samples from different data sets, different variables from different data sets, we would join them up but for the same ID in a new data set. 